Hello? Anyone in there? No sense of humor. Ah, the strong and silent type, eh? Think you're safe behind that mask? Give me 20 minutes in a can opener, and I'll have you whimpering like a schoolgirl. You might like it. That's enough, patient. Guard, leave us. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Professor Hugo Strange, and you are... Two-Face. Catwoman. <laughs> Batman. We can play these games as long as you like. Great. I love games. Not in my facility, you won't. I'm offering you this opportunity to make a deal. I am fully aware of your condition. The last thing you have is time. But I can make your final days more comfortable. And in return, I'd be giving you... Uh... I wish to study you. I need to know why you are the way you are. <laughs> I don't have long, Doc. You're going to need more than some psycho mumbo-jumbo to get to the bottom of what's wrong with me. Oh, I have more than that. Much more. So, do we have a deal? How are you feeling today? You promised me another doctor, Strange. Maybe you shouldn't have killed the one I sent last week. What made you do it? Fish gotta swim, birds gotta fly. Besides, it was worth it to see the look on her face. Hey, you know what? I think I've got a piece of it here in my pocket. You are trying my patience. That was the third doctor you've killed. Well, keep on sending them, Doc. I'm trying to break my record. I think it is time for you to do something for me. <laughs> Name it, Doc. Tell me how you came to be. Explain what made you what you are today. How you come to be sitting across the table from me. Dying. Is that all? Well, I guess you could say I once had a very bad day. Really? Go on. It was a Thursday night. Things had been getting worse. I was three days from the bank foreclosing on my home. The chemical plant I worked nights at was about to lay off half the workforce. And I was sitting in the hospital, holding the hand of my pregnant wife, wishing to God that she wasn't dead. That must have been upsetting for you. Probably was. Back then, though, all I knew was that if I didn't let old man Falcone's men into the plant that night, they'd have killed me, too. So here's the thing. I had to decide. Could I live without her? Was there any point going on? I've got to admit it. I was scared. Not of being dead, you understand. No one would blame you if you were. It is perfectly common. Do I look common? No. I was scared of the part just before you die, when you don't know what is about to happen, when you're desperately clutching at life and trying to hold on with slippery, blood-covered hands. So I made a decision right there. And what was that? That? Well, that... <laughs> is a story for another day, strange. I think I may need to see a doctor. Get me one. You were telling me about the night your wife died. Oh, no, Hugo. As I recall, I was waiting for you to send me another doctor. We both know I have sent you three more doctors. Did you? Yes. One was left dismembered outside the elevator to my office. The other two have not been seen since they were sent to you. How careless. Listen, Doc. Professor... Okay, Professor, I'll give you a little more. I just hope you're taking notes. It's the day after, and I'm standing in the freezing rain, just staring at the chemical plant, feeling numb. Jeannie was dead. It didn't seem real. I can remember the day I first met her, her infectious smile as I told her bad joke after bad joke. 
how, even after living with the pathetic wretch I was, she still wanted my child. And then they arrived. <laughs> Reality's way of yanking me another wedgie. Falcone's men told me to cheer up. He said, things could be worse. I asked him how. He grabbed me by the collar, pulled me close. He'd been eating garlic, and each word stank as he threatened to perform oral surgery on me with a nail and a brick. A creative guy. They hand me a box. I remember thinking it was heavy. Was it a bomb? A gun? I'd never used a gun before. Were they that heavy? And what was in the box? How's that doctor coming along? I'll get you one. And when you do, I'll tell you the rest. You are looking a little better, yes. Well, I have my good days and bad days, but I do try and start each one with a smile. <laughs> are you ready to continue your story? Yeah, why not? So where was I? The box. Ah, yes, the box. <laughs> So there I was, tearing open this box, expecting the worst. And all it had in it was a crazy red dome and a cloak. <coughs> I thought they were having a joke with me, but oh no. They made me put it on. They said it was a disguise. It would keep me safe. It smelled like garlic. And that was it, really. I was dressed up like a spaceman, barely able to see, trying to break into the one place in this town that had given me a job. Have you ever tried to walk with an enormous fishbowl on your head? Don't answer that. It's hard. I couldn't see where I was going. I must have tripped one of the alarms. I heard muffled gunfire. I panicked and tried to run. And then I saw him. Who? That man. Really? Yes, really. Batman tried to hit me. I moved out of the way, but, well, what you need to understand is I had this giant bowl on my head, and I lost my balance. It's like life, really. One minute everything's bad, and the next your wife's dead and you're hanging on for dear life, suspended over a tank of experimental chemicals. I'm sure he'd say he tried to save me, but we all know he didn't. I fell for a second... Just as I hit the surface, I thought I may just get away with this. I assume that wasn't the case. Do I look like I got away with it? I was drowning. The chemicals were burning my skin. My entire body felt like it was on fire. And it was all his fault. Whose fault? Batman's? Who else? Yours? Come again? Let me tell you what I believe. I believe that you have fabricated a series of events that you use to conceal the truth about your condition. I have read twelve different accounts of your past, all different except for one detail. Batman. What can I say? I like to keep things interesting. A wise man once told me that if you have to have an origin story, you're better off making it multiple choice. And never facing up to the truth of what happened. What you did. How you got here. Oh, I know exactly how I got here. A big truck brought me here from Arkham. You remember the asylum, don't you? Of course. Well, good. I'd hate to think that I'd fabricated seeing you watching me in my cell all those times. Excuse me? Hugo, you merry maniac. You were obsessed with me. <laughs> you all were trying to get in here. Next thing you'll tell me it wasn't you who sent old Sharpie over the edge. Nice work, by the way. Thank you. So here's the thing. If you want to make sure that no one else finds out about your past, you should start poking your nose into mine. Oh, and send me another doc, doc. I think I need a second opinion.
prisoner's here, sir. Very good. Send him in. But we haven't got the suit off him yet. He's dangerous. Are you sure? Of course. Victor Fries and I have much in common. We will be fine. Welcome to my facility. Please, take a seat. I prefer to stand. Why am I here? Oh, Victor, there will be plenty of time for that later. Right now, I wish to get to know you. Discover how you came to have such a frosty outlook on life. I have nothing to say to you. You may have taken my weapons, but my suit still has considerable offensive capabilities. I will freeze the marrow in your legs. Each bone will shatter and fracture while you remain completely aware of your impending paralysis, begging me to end you. I don't think that you will do that, Victor. Really? Why not? Simple. If you hurt me, your wife will die. Where is she? Where is my wife? Nora is in safe hands. Now, let's discuss an incident from your childhood. No. Then this is over. Guard. Wait. What do you wish to learn? Your early years were troubled. I was not a sociable child, but that is all. Even your parents disowned you. They sent you away to a reform school, correct? They did not understand my work. Your work? According to a police report, you froze over a dozen of your neighbor's pets. I have always had an interest in cryonic preservation. I didn't understand why my parents allowed our sick pets to die instead of attempting to save them. So I set about finding my own way. I intended to revive all of those creatures. But you didn't. Which brings us to Nora. Have you ever seen a flower die? Watched something that was once so beautiful, so full of life, collapse and rot from within? You refer to Nora's illness. It seems like yesterday when I first found her. It all happened so quickly. Suddenly, I was losing her. Did you see Kent? What about your employer, Gothcorp? I hid it from them. Diverting resources from Gothcorp's research in an attempt to find the cure. But in the end, I failed. Time was running out. I knew that if I was discovered, Nora would die. Why take that risk? Do you know what it is to love someone? To really love them? No. Nora was all I could think of. I reran the diagnostics, re-examined every detail from every angle, certain that I had missed something. I cursed myself for being so blind, so stupid. Surely there was a cure. I just needed more time. Then I realized what I had to do. I had worked without sleep for a week. My needs didn't seem important. Sleep didn't matter. Food didn't matter. It was only her. I looked at Nora and I told her that I loved her. She told me there was nothing I could do. That I, we, should just accept fate. She smiled her beautiful smile as she said it. I promised to cure her. And then... I pressed the button. You cryogenically froze her, keeping her on ice, so to speak, while you worked on a cure. It broke your heart, but now you had all the time in the world. Did you feel relieved? I went home and fell into a deep sleep. For the first time since we discovered Nora's illness, I dared to dream. But 
for weeks I had ignored my superior's attempts to contact me. For next morning I overslept. By the time I got to the lab, Ferris Boyle, the CEO, was there waiting. What did he do? He accused me of industrial espionage, which I denied. But then his guards found Nora. Boyle told me that, like all of my research, she belonged to him. I was enraged. I attacked him. His guards beat me back, and in the struggle, I was drenched by the cryogenic chemical I had created. I lay on the floor, helpless, watching the guards steal Nora away. Boyle told me it was a tragedy for such a promising mind to perish in a lab accident. Then he left me to die. But you survived. The chemicals were absorbed into my body and transformed my metabolism. My body went numb. I felt a strange tingling, then searing pain all over. Each breath ignited my lungs. I clawed my way back to a refrigeration unit, and as I closed the door behind me, I felt the icy chill calm my aching body. Things suddenly seemed clear. What seemed clear? Finding a cure for Nora? No. Revenge. Boyle would pay. You failed to kill Ferris Boyle, though, didn't you? Yes. Why? You know why. Batman. Though he did return Nora to safety. Until you got her. See? There you go. Blame me. Blame your parents because you failed to revive the neighbor's pets. Blame Ferris Boyle for spoiling your plans to cure Nora. Blame Batman for stopping your revenge against Boyle. And now your Nora is in danger. Because of you. No, Victor. Because of you. You have always had a heart of ice. You stole people's pets. You stole Gothcorp resources. And since then, you've stolen so much more for your own selfish scientific inquiries. If you had shared your genius with others, devoted your energy to medicine instead of pride, perhaps your ice princess would be at home now. Preparing you a hot meal instead of being delivered to the Joker. No! You could have saved Nora a long time ago, Victor. It's all for her. Everything. I will get her back. And when I do, I'm coming for you. Thank you. We are done now. Nora. Only doing this as a courtesy, Strange. Don't think you've beaten me. I just thought we could both benefit from a little talk, Mr. Cobblepot. Don't try that psycho mumbo jumbo with me, Strange. I'm not like the other crazies. Of course not. After all, considering the challenges you faced. Challenges? What freaking challenges? You're not better than me. No one is. I own this place. Well, to be clear, I allow you certain freedoms, but let's continue. Why do you feel the need to own anything? I believe it is a mechanism to compensate for some childhood inadequacy. You were friends with the Waynes, correct? I was. Till someone did the world a favor and blew the brains out of little Wayne's self-righteous parents. I was laughing for weeks. It still brings a smile to my face. And you think that's okay? Okay? No, I don't think it's okay. I think it's bloody hysterical. <laughs> that family destroyed mine. What happened to them? Well, it couldn't have happened to nicer people. Take it.
take a seat, Mr. Cobblepot. What is it now, Strange? I wanted to talk about your apparent hatred of the Waynes. Your outburst last time was most interesting. Oh, it's simple, really. I don't like this sniveling little bastard. Look at him. All high and mighty because someone killed Mummy and Daddy. Most people look upon him with sympathy. No, they don't. They're jealous. Jealous of his money, his cars, his women. He lost the sympathy vote when he vanished for those years. I can't tell you how much I hoped he was visiting his dear mum and dad. Where do you suppose he went? How am I supposed to know? Let us move on, then. No. It's time that you do something for me. And what is that? Here's a list. Told you, Strange. No more little questions until you give me what I want. Take a look, Mr. Cobblepot. Here is a purchase order for the various firearms you require. I must say, you chose an exotic selection. I only take the best. A wise strategy. So what's yours? Excuse me? What are you up to? Why would you give me, me of all people, guns, explosives, all this stuff? Arkham City is an experiment, Mr. Cobblepot. A new way of thinking. We've separated you from society, so I am more than willing to study the results if you all just decide to kill each other. Besides, your feud with the Joker is intriguing. I was here first. I bought my museum in the Iceberg Lounge fair and square. It was you and that mayo who stuck us all together. Again, you refer to owning things. Quite fascinating. I believe we gave you the opportunity to leave. And take over my turf. Never. Good evening, Mr. Cobblepot. I trust you received the second delivery? <laughs> yeah, I did. I don't know what you did to those dribbling monkeys, Strange, but they were perfect. I'm glad. It appears that we can both help each other. If you say so. I suppose it doesn't hurt that by the time I'm done with them, they're usually in too many pieces for anyone to know what you're really getting up to in those rooms of yours. I have no idea what you are talking about. Of course not. So, Hugo. The clown. She really dying? It appears so. Self-inflicted, of course, but yes, he is. He has Mr. Freeze working on a potential cure, but I am sure neither of us want him to get his hands on it, do we? We're ready. Good. Now, one last thing. Your face. It's beautiful, isn't it? The eye. I believe it was the result of a bar brawl, correct? Ah, Torag got lucky. He got his, though. He took my eye. I took both of his. Left him trying to walk across the Gotham Freeway at rush hour. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> You're a rich man, Mr. Cobblepot. You could have had that glass removed. They said it was impossible. And what the hell? I think it gives me a more unique look. Know what I mean? Now, where is Freeze? He's right here, in the room next door. You can take him with you. Are you familiar with the term Napoleon Complex? No. What is it? <laughs> it's nothing. Oh, and one last thing. Here is a list of ten prisoners I believe work for you. Yeah? So what? You want to saw their heads open and scoop out their brains, too? No. I just thought you'd like to know that they are all in the employ of the GCPD. What? I believe you know what to do with them. I don't like being spied on, Mr. Cobblepot. Good night. Sit down, Mr. Dent. It is Mr. Dent I am talking to, right? Use a real name. Two-Face, if you wish. Please, sit. What is it, Strange? 
Now they'll be just arresting us, throwing us in this place. I wish to understand you. I have read the reports, seen the footage, and now I want to hear your side of the story. <laughs> we'll see. I assume that you feel the need to toss your coin in order to decide whether to answer my questions. You ready to find out? Well? Came up bad. Sorry. Not a problem. Guard, take Mr. Dent's coin off of him. No! Good. Now let us see what fate has in store for you. I'll kill you for this. Really? Look at your coin. It wants you to tell me about that day in the courtroom. It was painful. Elaborate. I was naive. I thought I could make a difference. Falcone was going to go down for what he had done. But he had other plans. Look at my face! I am. A combination of first, second, and third degree burning. Mm, the scar tissue is quite fascinating. You think? And that is all it took to make you the way you are. Give me my coin. Not yet. What is it, Strange? Are you enjoying this? Not in the slightest. Let's go back further. You were a rising star, a beacon of light for this city. A white knight riding in to save it with a dark knight not far behind. You can leave him out of this. He's wrong. They all are. No one understands the beauty of fate's hand. I'm grateful to Falcone. He gave me a clarity, a purity that few will know. Everything boils down to a simple choice. This way or that way. Good or bad. Do you really believe that? How could I not? Interesting. So all you need is this coin, and everything is simple? Give me it! Or uh, what about this coin? Or this? Or these? What are you doing? Proving a point. Fate didn't make you answer my question. I did. I replaced your coin with my own. See? You answered me because I wanted you to. How is he today? The prisoner has been quiet. Since getting those coins, he has spent most of his time examining them. Good. Hello, Harvey. Are you ready to talk? Leave us. We don't want to talk. Not to you. Please, take a seat. I have one last thing to discuss, and then I will give you something in return. I don't know. I can't decide. It's too confusing. Of course it is. I want to talk about Mr. Wayne. Why? Indulge me. We don't like a guy. Hardly surprising. Did you ever consider that you were alike? A traumatic event created you. An equally traumatic event altered him. He's nothing like us. There's no risk, no danger. It's just money and girls. We should kill him. Maybe you should. Listen to me, Harvey. I am going to give you a simple choice. This is your coin. Is it? Why should I trust you? It was your father's, correct? You know every inch of it. When you close your eyes, you can feel it, can't you? Give me it. Please. I want you to understand what I'm about to tell you. You believe that this coin determines the fate of your world. I, however, believe that your condition has always been present. It was there before you were attacked, and it is still there now. You probably had headaches. Your wife found you unpredictable. Scary sometimes. Give us it! I'm going to throw the coin in the air. If you let it fall, I will do whatever I can to cure you. I will help you become the man you used to be. Or... If you grab it, I will let you loose in Arkham City. And I will tell you what Catwoman is doing right this second. I can't decide. You have to. 
Mm. At this moment, Catwoman is preparing to steal the contents of the safe in your old campaign office. The bitch. We need to stop her. And you may. Goodbye, Mr. Dent. Patient interview one. Subject's name, Jervis Tetch, a.k.a. the Mad Hatter. Brought to Arkham Asylum by the Batman six months ago. Patient exhibits signs of obsessive compulsion and paranoid schizophrenia. Sit down, Mr. Tetch. But it's not time to sit. I need Alice. Where is my Alice? Please. No time to sit, not time to chat. I'm searching for Alice and I've lost my head. Guard, restrain Mr. Tetch. Get off me. Get off me. I'm late. I'm running out of time, Alice. Where are you? Alice isn't here yet. Just relax, Jervis. She will be here soon. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> well, but when... Now, would you like some tea? No, I'm afraid not. Let us talk while we wait. You and I have much in common, Jervis. Really? Do you know Alice too? Unfortunately not. You and I both share an interest in the mind, do we not? I studied your papers, Jervis. You are quite brilliant. Truly an extraordinary mind. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's all just chemicals and synapses and rabbits and... Oh, where is Alice? You need to focus. Think about your work for a minute. You theorize that there is no such thing as free will, that you can change a man's allegiances, his motives, emotions, all of what we believe makes a man with chemicals. Your formula was really quite brilliant. That's why I used it. Well, how, how did you get it? Did Alice give it to you? <gasps> Wicked girl. Nasty little thing. Is she here yet? Soon, Jervis, soon. Is she? Oh, you told me that Alice would be here. She is, Jervis. She's right here. Alice? Alice, come out. Don't pout. Don't make me shout. Alice, come out. Where are you? Take a look at the pictures, Jervis. Oh, 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 oh. Who, who are these people? Look again. Oh, I, 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 I don't know who they are. Oh, please, is Alice here or not? Look at the first picture. Look at the dress she is wearing. Look at the hair. It's Alice, isn't it? No, no, no. It can't be Alice. Alice has nice yellow hair. And isn't covered in blood. I think you know exactly who this is, Mr. Tetch. I think you remember the night you lured Stephanie Williams back to your research lab. How you offered her tea. What happened then? No, no, no. You killed her, didn't you? No. She went first. It's okay, Jervis. It's all right to remember. How many Alices were there? I, I can't remember. <laughs> well, Alice isn't coming, is she? That all depends on how you cooperate. I have a little side project that I'm working on. I could use your help. My help? I can't help. I'll be late. Stay focused, Jervis. This facility is old, tired, full of ghosts. Ghosts? A figure of speech. Do not worry. Arkham Asylum will not exist forever. Its techniques are old. Its mission outdated. 
I intend to create a new Arkham, an Arkham that will rise phoenix-like from the ashes of this one. Is there a fire? We should get out of here. I have arranged for some documents to be left in your cell. They outline a technique I propose to control the mind of, uh, shall we just say, weaker souls. I cannot do it without rabbits. I need rabbits for my research and tea and... And Alice, I know. I have arranged for a number of test subjects to be at your disposal. They have been here at Arkham for so many years that no one will miss them. Shall we meet again next week? Oh, and I took the liberty of having your hats returned. I assume that will provide all the encouragement you require. Well done, well done. Well done, well done. I must say you have outperformed even my wildest expectations. Yes, did you see the people at my tea party? They all behaved themselves. <laughs> yes, they did, Jervis. I am very pleased. I have just one last request to make of you. You must keep it a secret. Can you keep a secret, Jervis? With enough hats, I can stop people remembering secrets. Does that count? It will have to. I need you to pay a visit to Warden Sharp. He needs to come around to my way of thinking. <gasps> to join our tea party? Exactly. I don't want to. Of course you do. How else will you get to play with Alice? Oh, what? I have a new assistant for you, Jervis. I had her brought in specially. Look at her. She's just through there. Oh, it's Alice. She's here. No, no, what are you doing? I need to see her. And you can, as soon as you do what I asked. Can I keep her? Of course. She'll be all yours. She's Alice. Do not fret, Mr. Mayor. Everything is under control, I promise you. It's not that I don't trust you, Hugo. It, it's just... it's just the headaches. The pain. They come all the time now. Continue to take the medication. But... It is late, Mr. Mayor. You are tired. You need your sleep. Of course. I need my sleep. You will hang up now. I will hang up now. Imbecile. I couldn't have put it better myself. What? How dare you enter my office? Oh, I'm not in your office. And please don't insult me by attempting to trace this broadcast. You will fail. I take it I am talking to Mr. Edward Nigma. Do you know of any other inmate in your twisted little penitentiary who is ingenious enough to arrange this little chat? Narcissism. A compulsive desire to prove his intellect. And a predilection for riddles. You've read my file. Of course. Good. Then let's get started. How do you attempt to understand what is going on in Arkham City when all of the answers are strange? Good evening, Hugo. I believe it is time for our one-on-one. -on -one. No. It is time for you to stop this and give up. My tiger guards will find you, and when that happens, I will perform the procedure on you myself. Procedure? Oh, you mean what you did to all those poor fools back at the asylum. To be honest, I think you did them a favor. How do you... How do I know that you requested access to all the most forgettable patients and proceeded to melt their brains with the help of that confused milliner? Or did you mean... How do I know that you have been providing the ex-warden with your own special medication? No doubt intended to render his synapses more malleable to your suggestions. Or maybe you are currently wondering if I know about the secret panel in your closet. How it slides back to reveal what you want most. How you sit, 
wearing that suit, crying into your hands as you questioned whether you were really worthy. What do you want, Mr. Nigma? Oh, that's easy. I want exactly what you want. And what's that? Batman, dead. Humiliated, but dead. Knock, knock, Professor. Guess who? I grow tired of these insipid games, Mr. Nigma. If you wish to speak to me, my guards will escort you safely to my tower. Please, Hugo. If you're going to set a trap, at least pretend to try harder than that. No traps, Edward. I simply wish to grant you safe passage through Arkham City. I think the time has come for us to meet as equals. You, Strange? My equal? I am the man whose cunning will soon have Batman lying at my feet, bloodied and broken. Really? Then I will pull off his mask and look into his dull, dying eyes. In that last instant, he will know that I have finally beaten him. And I will finally know who he really is. My apologies, Edward. I see now we are nowhere near equals. Finally. You see, like me, you are obsessed with the Batman. But unlike me, you don't know who he really is, do you? What? I know you are lying, Strange. There is no way that you could have figured it out. It's some kind of trick. It must be. Oh, I use no tricks, no childish puzzles. I simply created a psychological profile of the man most likely to be the Batman, and then matched it against the most logical candidate. I was right, of course. Well, who is he? Ah, but that would spoil the game for you, wouldn't it? You must tell me. I implore you, Strange. I... Really, Edward, if I could figure it out, it must be child's play for you. But I... I... Interesting. Tell me, Edward, how is the Riddler like a blank dictionary? You're both at a loss for words. We found the prisoner attempting to break into your office, sir. I see. Leave us. Yes, sir. Well, well, as I live and breathe, Professor Hugo Strange. Your posters really don't do you justice. You really are far more evil-looking in real life. Charmed. Tell me, what do you plan to do, Miss Kyle? I assume that you were attempting to break into my office in order to retrieve your ill-gotten gains. You stole them from me. Hardly. The items were confiscated upon your arrest. Yeah, about that. This holiday camp of yours is quaint and all, Hugo. But I don't think I'll be staying too long. Escape is impossible. A girl loves a challenge. So do I. Tell me, what would you do if I let you go? Attempt to escape? Try and find the confiscated items? Contact the Batman? Why would I contact him? It's his fault I'm in here. Is it? I believe you would have escaped if greed had not got the better of you. He was actually in the process of rescuing you, was he not? I didn't need his help. Or any man's, it appears. Come on, you're going somewhere with this? Spit it out. I've been studying you. I can see. My eyes are up here, by the way. Very amusing. Tell me, what was it like growing up alone? Fending for yourself? Doing whatever was necessary to stay alive? Please, I'm tearing up here. And Holly, what would you do if I sent my men after her? Touch her, and you're dead. Have you calmed down yet? Where is she? That depends on your next answer. If you could save one person tonight, who would it be? Holly? Or the Batman? He can look after himself. Good. Holly is safe for now. 
Let us talk about Batman. What do you think I can tell you that you don't already know? You've been sending your goons after him for months. He said you were studying him. So you speak. Good. You never knew your father, correct? Enough, Strange. This is over. If you say so. Captain, do you have the girl in your sights? Yes, sir. Kill her. No! Are you prepared to talk? I thought so. Keep the girl targeted, Captain. You bastard. Shall we continue? Your father. Did you ever meet him? Never knew the son of a bitch. Unfortunate. He certainly seems to have made an impact on you. The distrust of men, for example. Your relationship with that man, would you call it close? Me and the brooding one get along just fine. But you want more. <laughs> But you can't trust men, can you? What? Look, he's spoken for. He must be. How else could he resist all this? You are both very similar, aren't you? A shared disregard for the law, a belief that you are doing the right thing, and a similar taste in attire. But beneath the surface, there is a weakness. Like how? You both risk everything for a chance at redemption. You tell yourself it's to help her. He does the same for the boy. It's all just to make his life more complete, to become the father he never knew. You don't know anything about him. And neither do you. He hasn't confided in you because he doesn't trust you. And it hurts, doesn't it? I touched a raw nerve, didn't I? Are you still here? You're hurt because he knows who you are, but you don't know anything about him. Do you love him? No! <laughs> Holly is safe. I have little interest in the life of a teenage delinquent, unless, of course, she finds herself in my facility. What was all this about, Strange? Do you enjoy making people beg? Not at all. I am only interested in what makes people do what they do. Soon you will not have to worry about the Batman. Steal what you like, do what you must in a futile attempt to steal his heart. You will fail. You sound pretty sure of yourself. Plans are afoot, Miss Kyle. Soon you may wish to re-evaluate your admiration for him. I will be the one standing over his body. And the world will know that Hugo Strange is better than him. Yeah, whatever. Two-Face has placed what you are looking for in his safe in his old campaign office. He is someone else who cannot let go of his past. I hope that the contents of that safe make you happy. Thank you.